Without further ado, I want to call the next speaker to the stage, uh, Maggie Blanton, Supervisory Special Agent, Criminal Investigation Division of the FBI. Please welcome her with a big round of applause. Good luck. <laughs> That's where they brought him. Ah, thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maggie Blanton, and I am a supervisory special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation back in the United States. And I'm here today to talk to you all about a recent case, um, a takedown that happened last month uh, for the um, Deep Dot Web. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Deep Dot Web was a website that was created in approximately 2013. And it really became the heartbeat of the uh, darknet community. People could go there with a one-stop shop. They could find the latest and greatest on what's happening in the darknet community. So there were news, articles, and interviews of all the actors that are using the darknet. And they could look and see you know, the latest um, people that were arrested. You could go through and actually read about how they got caught and learn from those mistakes. Additionally, there were how-to guides that were posted quite frequently on the Deep Dot Web website. And these how-to guides were extensive. They would have step-by-step -step instructions on things like how to buy drugs online, how to um, send emails with encryption, how to avoid law enforcement detection. So you could uh, not know a single thing about uh, the darknet and you could navigate to this website and you could become an expert, which is quite incredible. Uh, additionally, they had comparison and reviews of darknet marketplaces. So what are darknet marketplaces? These marketplaces are very similar to what you might find in either Amazon or eBay. And uh, instead of maybe buying cat toys or dog food, you could buy drugs, guns, uh, dangerous chemicals, you could buy hacking tools, uh, anything you could think of pretty much. You name it, you could probably find it on a darknet marketplace. And so why does the FBI care about that? Uh, one of the main reasons is because everyday Americans are dying of drug overdoses. Uh, just last year, in fact, there were approximately 70,000 people that died of drug overdoses in the United States. So um, some of the things that the Deep Dot Web connected people to were these dark net markets. And they were able to do that by having reliable links on their website. Uh, one thing that made deep.web very unique was the fact that they had uh, two separate ways to access the website. So you could access it through the regular internet, uh, the open net, through uh, their .com website. And additionally, you could also access it through their .onion by going through the dark net. So a little bit more about these reliable links. Um, so the dark net is based in Tor, and to access uh, the darknet, you have to go through Tor. Tor is not a searchable um, place, so it's not easily findable through traditional search engines. So you have to really know that dot .onion to get to the location that you want to get to. And that's what made Deep.Web very special, was because there's so many scam sites out there that you need to know that you're getting a reliable website when you click on that link. And so Deep.Web did that for the community. Um, they created a trusted uh, links on their websites, and they uh, you know, provided a level of trust in the darknet community. Um, so here is a good example, uh, a graphic to show you really the criminal enterprise that happened on deep.web. So because of these reliable links that the deep.web provided, it really gave a gateway into the darknet marketplaces. And um, the way the administrators of the website did this were by first going onto a darknet marketplace and registering an account. Once they were able to register those accounts, they were able to get referral links, which they were able to post on deep.web. So these referral links were able to have a user you know, navigate right to deep.web. If they clicked on those links, it would take them directly to these hidden darknet marketplaces. Um, once they get on these darknet marketplaces, they're able to buy uh, these illegal goods, and then the administrators would receive a kickback on those proceeds that um, were from the goods that the, that the user just purchased. So these kickbacks um, 
where, you know, in the amounts of referral bonuses from 2 to 4%, usually, depending on the marketplace that these administrators were receiving. Um, and these commissions happened across the marketplaces. Uh, one example is uh, Alpha Bay Market, which was the largest darknet marketplace of its time before it was taken down by law enforcement. And on that website, on the darknet marketplace there, approximately 23% of all orders on that marketplace were referred to by Deep.Web. Additionally, Hansa Market, which was another uh, darknet marketplace seized by law enforcement, before that site went down, approximately 47% of all of those completed orders, you guessed it, referred to by Deep.Web. So Deep.Web was really um, referring hundreds and hundreds of thousands of users to darknet marketplaces, and those users in turn were purchasing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of illegal goods on these marketplaces. So as you can imagine, these administrators were breaking in tons of money from these illegal goods. And approximately $15 million we were able to track that they were able to make on gains and proceeds from these goods. So remember those uh, tutorials, those how-to guides that we were talking about? The, um, the reviews and ratings for each darknet marketplace? So all of those combined together really were able to um, help maximize the purchases on these darknet marketplaces and in turn maximize the profits that these administrators were able to make on these darknet marketplace purchases. So what did we do about it? So last month in cooperation and coordination with our fantastic law enforcement partners both here in Israel and in Brazil, we were able to arrest the two administrators of Deep.Web. Uh, both here in Israel and one other uh, administrator in Paris, France. Uh, and this could not have been done without the great coordination and uh, fantastic partnerships that we were able to build with these two countries. Uh, these two administrators were both arrested and charged with money laundering conspiracy, which in the United States they will face approximately 20 years in federal prison. Uh, additionally, we were able to seize the infrastructure of both the .com and .onion and put up this lovely splash page you see here. Um, and also, we were able to um, really see that in these type of cases, uh, the darknet has no boundaries. And what's so important about it is that, you know, these crimes also, they're borderless and they're a global threat. And we cannot do this without relying on our global partnerships and especially in this case, the great partnerships with law enforcement that we had in Germany, the Netherlands, Israel, and Brazil. And with that, I say thank you.